can show up with any emotions, to be honest. Um, so like I said, fear is definitely a big one that most people feel in the gut. Um, however, looking at why we have that fear in the first place is the most important thing. So like I just said in the last example, if the fear is that the outside world asks too much of us, that's still a fear. If the fear is I'm not going to be good enough, that's a fear. Uh, we tend to not always tie the mental and the emotional together. So I found this a lot when I'm working with people. They can identify these thought patterns of, oh, no, I need that to be 100% before I can do it. I need to make sure that I'm perfect at everything. But they won't necessarily tie that to fear. When we dig down a little bit deeper into that, why do you have to be perfect at everything? Because there's a fear of rejection, there's a fear of judgment, there's a fear of something there. Mm. And this makes sense just on a really basic level. Think about how many times you've gone into something you're nervous about. And I think everybody's had this experience of butterflies in the stomach when they're nervous. Or I've worked with quite a few people who will find that when they need to go and do a public presentation or something, they'll get diarrhea beforehand or just like a gurgly stomach or something, because that's where we feel that fear a lot of the time. Mm. Now, that doesn't mean to say that that's not linked to other parts of our body and other emotions as well. So I touched a little bit on emotional eating just now. And I do this a lot on the retreats that I work on when I give nutrition workshops there. I often ask people where they feel something like anger in the body. And the answers are almost always either stomach, chest, or throat and jaw. So if we're feeling anger in different places, that's absolutely fine. We are all unique. We get to tune into where we feel it for ourselves. But if we've been told Again, especially with women, I think more so with men these days as well, but especially with women, a lot of us have been raised that we're not allowed to scream and shout, we're not allowed to be angry, we'll be seen to be a bitch, we have to be sweet and smiley and nice to everybody all the time. So if we have anger that's coming up through these areas that we've been taught we're not allowed to express, mm. it makes sense that if we're feeling here, here or here, and it's threatening to come out the mouth, and that's a dangerous thing, we can pick up something heavy and we can put it in and push that back down again. So what we're actually doing is causing ourselves physical symptoms in the physical body, but we're doing it because of the emotional body. The emotional mm. body's the part in charge. It's just the actions and the symptoms are showing up in the physical body instead. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, the way the way that I've kind of looked at it for a while now, you know, you hear the term emotional eating, right? Now, it's strange because I can't relate to that on a personal level. I can understand what it means, but like it's not something I've ever experienced myself. I mean, yes, you can eat food and you, it can make you feel phys um, emotionally better. Yes, of course. But I've never kind of felt low. Oh, I need to eat a cake, right? That just doesn't doesn't compute to me but I completely understand that people that you know a lot of people do that and again I, I in my experience it's more so females than males but the way that I look at it is you know if someone's got let's say an emotional trauma that they've not dealt with correctly the way that they're trying to deal with it is on the physical level mm -hmm. right and yeah, they might feel emotionally better for five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe until their blood sugar crashes <laughs> and then they won't feel so good again. Right. But really to, to, to get rid of, you know, that, that let's call it a habit, you need to address it at the emotional level. So, okay, what was the trauma? Okay. Let's, let's deal with that emotional issue. And then you won't necessarily be going for the for the cake or, or whatever it might be to try and uh, medicate the emotional trauma yeah I completely agree I have um 
I have a way that I've developed to work with emotional eating with clients and a lot of it has come from my own study for myself. Like I said, I, I went down the road of going far too far into the nutrition and movement stuff when I was younger and I had years of uh, anorexia, bulimia, which then led into just lots of yo-yo dieting, emotional eating, just a very a very dysregulated relationship with food for a very long time and so I completely get this from my own experience as well and there tends to be two things that happen with emotional eating we are either trying to move towards something or move away from something when we're trying to move towards something it's often a connection so this might be something like um, the example I use often is my nan made the best chocolate cake ever. Uh, back when I used to eat gluten when I was a kid, which is probably why I had the upset stomach all the time, to be honest. <laughs> but she made the most amazing chocolate cake. So I may, on the anniversary of my nan's death or on her birthday or a special occasion where I want to feel more connection to her and I want to honor her, I may want to go and have a piece of chocolate cake because in my mind, that's tied with the memories of the love and the nurturing that I got from my nan. Mm. Now, if I had not grieved her death yet, if I was still working through a lot of the emotions around that, and that was a very traumatic event for me, I might unconsciously be trying to connect with her on a regular basis by going, I need chocolate cake, I need chocolate cake, I need chocolate cake. And as you mentioned, a lot of the time it's unconscious. Mm. So. It may not be that I'm thinking, oh, I want a connection with my nan. What I'm actually thinking is I want chocolate cake and I have this uncontrollable need to have chocolate cake right now. And this is a difference as well of, oh, I can eat a cake and it can feel kind of nice for a while. That's not emotional eating. Emotional eating, a lot of the time we have this drive where we can know I've said I'm gonna eat like this, I've been doing all this, my body loves it when I eat like this. I'm very, very clear about how I feel when I eat the chocolate cake, how I feel when I don't eat the chocolate cake, yet I'm still going to make that decision to do that thing that's gonna harm my body because I'm getting something from it that is worth more than the physical pain. And that's where we start to, to be able to dive into the unconscious a little bit more and work out right what is that level of connection you're trying to get why how else can you get that connection and start to be able to slowly change behaviors now the other side of that is trying to avoid something with food and this is something that i actually see far more than trying to get some kind of connection um and a lot of this is repressed emotions that can be coming from trauma, from um, just different habits that we've learned throughout our lives. But we can create this, this idea that a certain emotion or a certain sensation within the body is unsafe. And when we feel unsafe within the body, we don't want to be in the body anymore. So the example I used earlier was anger. So for simplicity's sake, let's use the same one. Um, I'm feeling very angry, let's say, I'm feeling overwhelmed, like I said earlier. And so when I'm feeling overwhelmed, it's nut butter and dark chocolate. They are the, the two things. And I don't just mean that, oh, I will sit down with a piece of dark chocolate and a bit of nut butter. What I mean is my alert of, okay, there's some emotional work to do here is a Costco sized jar of almond butter and a teaspoon. And I can tell myself, oh, I'll just have a spoon or two. I know I'm not stopping till I get to the end of it. I know that already when I start it. So there's an element of being honest with ourselves. Like, am I having a slice of cake or I'm gonna eat the whole cake? Uh, am I doing something that I know is going to hurt my physical body? If so, why am I doing it in the first place? And so let's say I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm sitting down with my giant jar of almond butter and I'm starting to dig in and go, oh wait, this is a place I've been before. I know this is gonna really upset my gut. I know this is gonna upset my skin and my sleep and everything as well, and I'm gonna feel pretty bad after I've eaten this. Why am I doing it? And that, now that I've done a lot of this work, is now my cue for me to look and say, okay, how am I feeling in my body? 
And most of us are trying to get out of our body. So it takes some work to pull ourselves back in and say, what is this sensation? What is this emotion that's going on right now? I feel overwhelmed. Why do I feel overwhelmed? Because I feel like everybody wants a piece of me and I can't keep up with it. Okay, how is that making me feel underneath that? Oh, actually I'm angry. I'm really angry that people are asking this much of me. I'm really angry that I'm not saying no to these people. I'm angry with myself. And this is a really uncomfortable place to be because I've been taught that anger's not something that I'm allowed to feel or should be expressing. So actually what I wanna do is get the hell out of here and change my state. And the easiest way to do that is with food. 